Okay, hello, welcome back to another video today. As you can see, I've got chat GPT up. A little bit late to the whole trend here. I'm gonna say name a chess opening. No, you know what? I'll say name a chess gambit. Okay, the queen's cat, it's not a real gambit. <sighs> name a fun chess gambit. If it says the queen's gambit again, I might just throw my computer out the room. One fun and unorthodox. Okay, this sounds good. Is the what? The Elephant Gambit. Okay, the Elephant Gambit. Now, I believe I've heard of the Elephant Gambit. We'll see what ChatGPT thinks it is. Okay, now it's just telling me about... Right, you know what? We're playing the Elephant Gambit. Okay, so here we are. We're facing E4. We're going to play E5. Uh, if our opponent goes for Knight F3, which they do, we can play D5, the Elephant Gambit. Now, uh, I believe Bishop D6 was the move ChatGPT told us to play here. And after they defend it, I think we can take... Maybe... We take, and we're threatening takes, takes, and okay. So they step back and attack the bishop, right. This is very interesting. We may have to give up the bishop here, because I feel like moving this bishop again would be an absolutely horrible L. It also could be the best move, uh, as tends to be the case in chess. I could just step back, though. We're not actually down any material now. Our opponent allowed us to take this way. Um... I guess we could just go knight f6 as well. You know what, bishop e7, I want my bishop pair. I want my bishop pair, I'm happy to step back. I've got a feeling I can hit this knight about at some point. Um, like for instance, okay, we'll go bishop to e6, the knight moves back. Hello, what about this? You're gonna maybe try and step through with d5, fine, I'll just drop back. And my plan is to launch these pawns where the king is inevitably going to be castled. I say inevitably, it's very likely my opponent still has all three pieces in the way to castle queenside. I'd imagine if not their next move, one of the next moves will be castling uh, kingside here. They go g3 to probably prevent g um, f4 rather. Now we'll go knight f6, you can't play d5 anymore. They still castle this way and they've given me this, this hook here, this g3 hook. Now a hook, for those of you that don't know, um, is a pawn that's in front of your opponent's king that's been pushed, allowing you to basically force some kind of tension with the move, for instance, h5, h4. Um, forcing this tension here, the pawn can't be pushed past, otherwise it's going to hang. Um, and we're going to be able to forcefully open our h file and then get the queen in, hopefully make the king. So I could immediately go for h5, which I'm very, very, very tempted to do, but I think... Nah, what, who am I kidding? Why would I develop my pieces? h5. Of course h5. We're going to attack straight away. I'm going to try and demonstrate just how weakening this move is by just going like straight in for it. Wow. The knight comes back ready to hold this square. Okay, this means I probably want to play g5 at some point. I've, oh, what about this? What about this? You try and kick it, I just leave it there. Look at this, like knight g4, h3, knight c6. You take, I take, my h files open. I maybe play g5, f4, you know what? Oh, I don't know. I actually don't know. Because I don't want my opponent's knight getting here, actually. No, we're going for it. We're going for it. We're going to allow the bishop and the queen to support the push of g5. And I'm very tempted. I mean, you can't take this now. That would be terrible. Because then I take back. You have no defender for the light squares around here. Um, the h file is open. And the rook is looking menacing. All my pieces pointing towards the king, uh, it's not going to end well for white. And it just remains now to be seen whether they go for a move like h3, they do. You know what, okay, just because I called it. We're going to play knight c6, have my knight if you want. This is the plan. We give up the piece, a full sacrifice. This is often known as a uh, fishing pole sacrifice, um, where you just like, you just, you cast that h pawn in, I assume is why it's called that. Um, and then you, you support the knight. Allow it to, to hang for this beautiful rook, without a doubt, the best rook on the board. Um, now, I'm going to go c3, which feels a bit passive to me. It feels like, okay, yes, you're securing this pawn, but actually now there's no knight c3 quickly. I don't know, although maybe they're going to go b4, b5. Probably that's a good idea. Okay. So now, how do I actually continue my attack? <laughs> um... I need my queen on the h file, uh, but my pieces are kind of in the way. <laughs> Not ideal. 
I could just move my bishop. Wait, does bishop here work? <laughs> takes, takes. Wait, 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 wait. I feel like I should play g5. No, okay, I need I need my queen on the h file. I need my queen probably on uh, h5 here. So honestly, what am I going to do? I think we will just move the bishop. Oh, but I'm going to get forked though. But do I care? I get forked. Queen f6, you take my bishop, I go here. Oh no, I don't go there. <sighs> okay, d6, I get forked. Queen, how is there no easy way onto this file? I don't understand. Huh. This knight is so annoying. You know what? We're going to go bishop here. We're going to go bishop to d5. Blockade the pawn from being pushed. Also, potentially there's an idea to play e3 at some point. Trade the uh, bishop off for the knight, which could be a really useful thing to trade off as a defender here. Um, but also allows our queen to be lifted up so it can try and start venturing across. Um, we'll go to g6 now. And is my opponent's king going to try and make a run for it? Like bishop b5 and king f1, king e2. Maybe. We actually could see that. The bishop steps back. But wait a second. What if I just do this? Like, hello? This is the whole point of the game. I just stack on the h file. Okay, guys, this was so dubious, but I'm pretty sure. Like, how do you stop this? You put the knight here? Okay, I can go g5 if I want. I could also just take. Like, takes here, pawn takes, queen takes. Bishop here, I guess. Okay, we're going we're going for g5. We are we are forking the pieces and the knight can't move. So we can now we can pick up this bishop, I guess. Okay, we'll pick up the bishop, takes, and then we can just We can just drop the bishop back actually. Because we still have time, this knight is still hanging. I do have 25 seconds, which is maybe slightly concerning, but that is frankly far too much time with a with an attacking position like this. Um, we're going to take the knight here. And dropping the bishop back allows for maybe rook d8 at some point. I maybe could have castled queenside, actually. Oh, that would have been such a better move. What am I doing? Why didn't I castle queenside? Okay, completely, you know, complete blind spot there. But... We can uh, we can get over it. I'm sure the analysis will tell me that casting queen side was a better move because then the rook's on the same file as the queen and there's probably some tempo to play like e3 and take here and then open this and checkmate. I don't know. But I'm sure we are still winning. Uh, our opponent had to give up a piece there to prevent our attack. This was a very dubious game, but let's let's remember it came from the, uh, the elephant gambit here with the uh, chat GPT suggestion. I've never played this opening before. Oh, it's my move. Probably shouldn't be looking at this when I have like no time left. Takes. And we'll go check. They blockaded the push of the Oh, I should have gone bishop c5. Okay, I can still go bishop c5. Right. Obviously taking and then taking is the threat. Um also rook h3 is a threat. Wow. You know what? Rook h3. Look look at this. I have 13 seconds left, so I kind of need to go for checkmate. I mean, you can't move this. You can't move this. Everything's pinned. I'm going to take on here because this actually doesn't defend it because it's pinned to the king. If the king moves, then we just take. Then you take my rook. What have I done? Why would they resign? I had 13 seconds. <laughs> okay, let's look at the analysis. Okay, so here we are in the analysis of that game. Now... We'll turn on the database uh, and I'll turn the engine as well. We'll have a little look at what's going on. First of all, I'd just like to say that the percentages, I played 84% accuracy, which I, I'm very surprised at. I thought that would be like 50% accuracy because I was going for a lot of very dubious ideas. 84 is not horrible, um, not exactly the greatest, but uh, we played e5, of course, not f3, and then, yeah, the elephant gambit, as you can see here with the move d5, inaccuracy uh, immediately. So that's going to kind of harmed the percentage already. So you see, I don't know, 84 might actually not be that bad. Anyway, um, 
takes here, they should have, one second, let me just saw the volume. Um, if they've taken here, I think, yeah, e4 is the move. Um, and then queen e2, knight f6, knight c3, bishop e7. They take another pawn, and then we take this one. Okay, I guess this is uh, the Paulson County Gambit, actually, is uh, is another line that I guess the Masters are playing. But we, we do see that Masters, up to uh, 250 games have been played in the Masters database. And after takes here, bishop d6, this is what chat GPT was telling us to play. Um, d4, takes the pawn, okay, knight c4, and I went bishop e7, which is the engine's top move, preserving the bishop, okay, perfect, we like this, we like this, right, we can get rid of the database now. Bishop e2, uh, I went for bishop here, for knight f6, but um, after the knight drops back, f5, best move, oh my god, elephant gambit prodigy right here. Now, my opponent could have played d5, um, and I could have just even dropped all the way back to c8. Um, but after they go for g3, knight f6, best move. Okay, so this opening, I actually am better here. Because uh, my opponent, I guess, yeah, they, they castled behind this hook for, like, no reason. But then, um, okay, yeah, here's where it was a mistake. Uh, kind of a bit of a dubious idea to go for this straight away. I believe I said in the game that I probably should develop this first. Uh, maybe go queen d7 and castle. Maybe playing an idea of f4 and going in like this. Um, I'm pretty sure I knew that was the best idea, so... You know what fair enough but i went for h5 anyway purely for the entertainment value and also just to prove the point um conceptually that this is a really powerful way to attack because as you saw my opponent drops back here and i went in with the knight another mistake these are both mistakes i don't know how this was 84 percent accurate if i okay anyway i guess it was either mistakes or like computer top moves anyway uh my opponent could have gone f3 here to which i go e takes f3 bishop takes f3 Oh, and then I guess there's tempo on here. Yeah, I guess there's tempo on here. But, I mean, I don't even have to take, right? Like, what if I go knight c6? Then you take, and I take. Oh, but I guess then the bishop can get in, and the king can run more easily. Okay, fair enough. Instead, h3 happened. And here, yeah, knight to c6, not even a bad move, as you see. Giving up the full piece. White does have a bit of an advantage here. Um, but obviously, white has a little bit of an advantage. This is a bit of a dubious... Uh, line we've gone for but after we take back opening the h file um yeah again i said c3 seemed a bit passive gives us back a little bit of the advantage there's no knight c3 they should have gone for d5 sooner actually which is very interesting i take and then you go knight c3 and after i move you can trade the queens and then i guess the the fact that you're up a knight for the couple pawns is a lot more meaningful but instead my opponent goes for c3 you see how one move can lead to me i'm actually completely winning here uh it wanted queen d7 Maybe to then move the bishop, go queen f7 and queen h5. That could have been... One second, let's just have a quick look. Uh, if they just went like knight here. Oh, they just want me to castle? Maybe double up with the rooks? Okay, instead I went for this. This is the blunder. But from here on out, I'm pretty sure I played this really well. The reason is because they have knight to e3 here, hitting the bishop. Um, if I'd then gone queen d6, I guess they've got... Oh, they've got king g2. And they've got time after vacating the knight here. Um, to then bring the rook over here, and then my h-file doesn't mean too much, and as you can see, the evaluation returns to roughly the plus two that is representative of being up a knight for a pawn. Um, but my opponent didn't go for that. Okay, I, I will keep that in mind. They should have moved the knight, gone up and played rook to h1, definitely. Um, but they don't. I went queen d6, ready to slide across, and then yeah, look at this. We're now just winning. There was only one move there, and that move was to sacrifice the bishop, because after I take, they can take here, and I can't castle, and this is weak ridiculous stuff um everything else leaves me winning especially this because queen g6 and look at the state of this oh my god the engine just absolutely hates the position and from here i'm completely winning now bishop f1 was a mistake queen h5 perfect uh, not too hard to find g5 here i probably could if i played bishop takes here it's much less strong after takes and takes and then yeah because as i said bishop g2 this bishop holds um the h2 square so we went for g5 of course beautiful move very aesthetic move forking here um we saw the bishop go in here takes best pawn takes and as i said i said in the game queen side castles would have been a much better move i don't know why i didn't do that um i just was in the sort of mind frame of attacking here and not really thinking about a beautiful move like this uh where i can maybe even go like this and some discovery and oh. anyway annoying to have missed that but bishop g6 still really accurate still completely winning uh and after the bishop goes here pick up the knight the rook comes up to not let me push the pawn. Uh, we take here, 
And after pawn takes, it wanted f4. Oh no, queen h2. Okay, queen h2, king moves, then it wants f4. Because if f4 and takes, do I play... Oh my god, then I can play bishop check. And if the king goes back, I can then take here with check. I guess the f file's open. And nothing can come to here because, like, just look at the state of it. If the king runs, then that's checkmate. It, okay, ridiculous stuff. Um, instead of f4, I went for bishop c5. I had 15 seconds left here. Um, just pinning the rook to the king. And after the queen comes up, I could have played f4 again. I could have queenside castled. But a very beautiful move, I think. Rook to h3, um, which the engine's loving. Basically just saying, this is pinned. This is pinned. If you go king e1, um, I was going to play queen g1 check. That's correct. Um, so let's say here, queen g1. And, okay, if the king runs to d2... I mean, if you block here, I can just take, yeah. And then I was going to go like in with the rook and just take all of this stuff. But if you don't block and you run, uh, then wow, bishop takes here, queen takes, I can take this. Yep. Queen blocks, queen side castles, look at that. The king moves, you can like just take this. Okay, yeah, it's a complete win. Um, It would have been more interesting to see the time scramble because I obviously only had 30 seconds left. But my opponent resigned in this position. They just rage quit because they couldn't move anything. Absolutely brutal stuff. We were threatening to take here as well. Um, if they played some move like this, then it likes rook takes, but there's also queen takes here now, which it actually prefers. Wow, yeah, because this rook is pinned. The king steps back. I can then take this. If queen takes, we just pick this up. Okay, yeah, you can take here, but g3 and mate. Anyway, I'll stop analyzing now. Beautiful game to an extent. Elephant Gambit, chat GPT recommended. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed, uh, like, comment, subscribe, all of that stuff really helps out the channel and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.